Welcome back, ladies and gents. In this YouTube video, I'm looking at 9.1 displacement time graphs. 9.1 represents chapter 9, section 1 of the Pearson A level Math Supplied Maths Year 1 textbook. Let's have a look at the key facts of this section, starting off with two important notations. S represents displacement and T represents time. Displacement is a vector quantity. It's got a magnitude and a direction. Whereas distance is a scalar quantity. It only has a magnitude. Consider point A and consider point B. So we've got A to B is 10 meter and B to A is 10 meter. The displacement is given by AB plus BA. So we've got 10 meter going forward, so 10. And then we've got 10 meter going backwards, so minus 10. 10 plus minus 10 is zero meter. So the displacement from A to B and then B to A is zero meter. Whereas the distance now, ladies and gents, is given by 10 plus 10. Okay, because distance has a magnitude, it does not have a direction. So the distance traveled from A to B, B to A is 20 meter. Consider the following displacement time graph. Now over here, what we have is a stationary object. This is because S does not change over T. Consider this displacement cycle. In this scenario, what we have is constant velocity objects. S increases at a constant rate over T. We've got some more important facts over here. The velocity of a particle is given by gradient of displacement time graph. So in other words, the way we calculate the gradient of a displacement time graph is to look at the change in displacement divided by change in time. The average velocity, on the other hand, is given by displacement from starting point divided by time taken from starting point. And finally, average speed is given by total distance traveled divided by time taken from starting point. These are all the key facts of 9.1 displacement time graphs. I'll be implementing these key facts within this exam style question. Let's have a look at the exam style question. Figure 1 shows a displacement time graph for a car traveling along a straight road. The journey is divided into three stages labeled A, B, and C. Part A work out the velocity of the car for each of the three stages of the journey in kilometers per hour. So let's have a look at the solution to part A. We are going to start off with stage A. Okay, so stage A. Now, velocity is equal change in displacement over change in time. So for stage A, the change in displacement is 16 kilometer over change in time is 20 minutes. Okay, we need to convert 20 minutes into hours. So we do 20 divided by 60, which is 1 over 3 hours. So we've got 16 divided by 1 over 3. Ladies and gents, this is equal to 48 kilometers per hour. Let's move on to stage B. Okay, so now we've got stage B. Velocity equal change in displacement over change in time. So for stage B, you can see that the change in displacement is just zero. So we've got zero over a change in time. So we start at 20 minutes and we end at 60 minutes. So the change in time is 40 minutes. Now 40 minutes, you can convert it into hours by dividing by 60. This is equal to 2 over 3 hours. So we've got 0 over change in time, which is 2 over 3. As you can see, this gives us 0 kilometers per hour. Moving on to stage C. Okay, so velocity equal change in displacement of a change in time. Right. Now, if we look at stage C, we can see that the change in displacement will be minus 16. We're going backwards. Okay, so minus 16 over change in time. So we start at 60 minutes and we end at 90 minutes. So the change in time is 30 minutes. Now we convert 30 minutes into hours. So we've got 30 divided by 60, which is equal to a half hour. Okay, 
So we've got minus 16 over a half. So this gives us minus 32 kilometers per hour. And that, the ladies and gents, completes part A of the question. Let's move on to part B. State the average velocity for the whole journey. So for part B, average velocity whole journey. So now what we are looking at is the total displacement from the starting point. So we start at zero and we go back to zero. Okay. So if we go forward by 60, backwards by 16, so 16 minus 16, the displacement is zero. So the total displacement from the start of the journey is zero. Divide by the total time taken. Okay, so the total time taken from the starting point is 90 minutes, which is basically three over two hours, or you could say 1.5 hours. Okay, so this here basically gives us zero kilometers per hour. Right, moving on to part C of the question. Work out the average speed for the whole journey. Okay, so the average speed for the whole journey. Now we know that average speed is given by total distance traveled over uh, time taken from the starting point. So average speed for the whole journey. So what is the total distance traveled? So we go forward by 16 kilometer and then we go backwards by 16 kilometer. But we know that distance is a scalar quantity. It has a magnitude, not a direction. So the total distance traveled is not zero, it is 32. So we've got 32 kilometers divided by the total time taken, which is three over two hours. Okay, so we can put this into our calculator. So equal to 64 over 3 kilometers per hour. We can round this to three significant figures and we get 21.3 kilometers per hour. And that, dear ladies and gents, completes the exam study in question and this teaching video 9.1 displacement time graphs. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.